Oh, our three video. We'll see about that. Let's see how much she gets wrong here. You're here because you want to learn about this little baby. No, I'm here because I want to learn about the R3, but you're the only one I can go to because you're a Canon EOL hack and you just have the money truck backing up. That's why you're an ambassador and you're just gonna say it's amazing and I wish there was somebody else that I could go listen to this about this because you're just gonna tell me it's wonderful and I just, so oh man. It's been a long time coming. I've had this thing for months. I've shot three real jobs with it, plus did a whole campaign for Canon. So I know what to tell you about this baby. This is the newly released just now Canon EOS R3 or EOS R3. I really don't care. Can we move on? No, we cannot move on. It's supposed to be EOS, EOS. It's the goddess of light. Get it right. It's EOS. This is meant to be the camera that's between, well, this camera and uh, this camera. We've got the R3 that's really a hybrid kind of between the R5 and the 1DX3, a mirrorless camera and a DSLR camera. Why is it a hybrid? Why do we need this camera? Well, sports shooters for one definitely are happy to have a lot of the functionality with the 1DX3 now put into a mirrorless camera. And let me just tell you, <laughs> Uh, there's a pretty big difference here. This 1DX3 is much heavier than the R3, and I'm gonna go as far to say that you're getting an upgrade for a downgrade in weight. Now let's look at the R5, the difference between the two. Now I do have the battery pack on here, but to me it's the only way to shoot. Even with the two of these, I think, I think the R5 is a little bit, heavier with the battery pack. Obviously without the battery pack, the vertical grip on it, it would be lighter, but either way, there's a little bit of a comparison for you. Why didn't you talk about the battery life, Vanessa? Some of us need to know about the battery life and how the 1DX3 has a longer battery life than the R3 because it's a mirrorless camera, Vanessa, duh. Your name should be Vanessa, duh. I'm pretty sure that the 1DX3 is about a pound heavier than the new R3. So let's get into all of the specs because I know that's what you want. And then we'll get into comparing some of these files and how I use this camera on a job. And what am I gonna end up with? Am I gonna still shoot with the R5 or am I gonna bump to the R3? We've got a back illuminated stacked 24.1 megapixel sensor. 24 megapixels, what am I gonna do with that? Why would I wanna use 24 megapixels when I can just have a Sony that has a million megapixels or I can use the R5 that has a million megapixels? Why would I want to have only 24 megapixels? Well, I suppose sports shooters really like that it's faster uh, and then also can faster send it to editors and things like that. But that doesn't matter because I think 24 is stupid. Now here's the thing, I know you're all like, well, why 24 when we've got the 45 megapixels in the R5? Well, this is meant to be a sports camera. It's meant to be fast above all. The electronic shutter, you are shooting at 30 frames per second. On the mechanical, you're down to 12, but considering the suppression of the rolling shutter, which is four times better in this camera than in the 1DX3, you know, you're, you're gonna be shooting fast. This is great for shooting fast. You can hardly even see that rolling shutter distortion in this, especially compared to the 1DX3. Oh, I can't see the rolling shutter distortion. Well, how about, does the ball look like an egg? Vanessa, tell me, does the ball look like an egg? Along with fast shooting, you're gonna wanna know about the autofocus, which is one of the fun things about this camera. As usual, Canon is killing it with autofocus. You have eye head face detection that's only getting better and better with the deep learning technology, but not not only do you have subject recognition for humans and animals, with the R3, you have it for vehicles too. So all of you vehicle photographers, you are probably gonna wanna pick up this camera like immediately. How come you didn't talk about the fact that it was intelligent and tracking recognition, intelligent recognition tracking, and that no matter where, if you get that focus point even near ahead, anywhere near ahead, it's just gonna pop there. It's just gonna pop, 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 and get right where you want it to be. How come you didn't mention that? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Here's what I'm sure you all wanna talk about. The eye control autofocus. What the heck is that? Well, you haven't seen it since the EOS 7S, which was an old film camera, and it had that in there. I never used that camera. That was back in 2004. Of course, you never used that camera, Vanessa, because you're not a real photographer. You're not a real camera reviewer. You're not even a YouTuber. I was, yeah, I just 
couldn't afford a camera like that <laughs> at that time. But we have it now and I'm sure the tech is much better than it was back in 2004. So here's my experience with it. How does it work? Number one, you have to calibrate it. You do have to turn it on and you've got to move your eye all around the viewfinder so that it calibrates to your eye. This is not a one and done thing. You do have to do it a few times. You have to do it a few times for the orientation of the camera, depending on how you hold it. I don't know, uh, think about it that way. You also have to do it in different lighting situations. So don't just do it in your studio, go outside and do it outside, then wait for it to be nighttime and do it again during the night. The more that it learns your eyeball and you do have calibrated profiles, profiles, you do have, different calibrated profiles. So if you have different people shooting with this camera, they're gonna calibrate it on a different profile line than yours, and the camera will learn your eye. The more you calibrate it, the better it's gonna get. Now, is this usable all the time? I'm gonna go ahead and say no. It's not something that you're gonna to wanna to use it all the time. I found the best uses for it to be during receptions at night when I'm just like darting around and there's a lot of faces jumping in front of me and sometimes that eye autofocus just went to the person that I didn't want to focus on. So that eye control autofocus during receptions at night, awesome, awesome feature. Plus, it's really easy on and off. It's not like you have to go in and change your focus settings. All you're doing is pressing the set button and that's gonna toggle the eye control on and off. So, easy, easy peasy. Well, since we're talking about looking through here, let's talk about the EVF. It's a 5.76 million dots electronic viewfinder. It's smooth as hell. It's blackout free at 120 frames per second refresh rate, so you're you're good. How come you didn't mention that it was only blackout free for using the electronic shutter? Don't you know that the mechanical shutter, which is only a 12 FPS, is not blackout free? It's almost like looking through an optical viewfinder, but if you want to look through an optical viewfinder, the R3 has an optical viewfinder simulator. This is really good for low light situations. Now, I have to admit, I have to admit, with the R5, when I'm shooting receptions or anything low light, it just sort of does that shutter draggy thing. Much improved in the R3 much improved in the R3. And on top of it, um, they have that optical simulation, optical viewfinder simulation, that's what they're calling it. So it's actually going to be much more similar to an optical viewfinder versus it changing the frame rates and, and things like that for when you're looking through the R5, really. What you're trying to say about the draggy, it's supposed to have slow shutter suppression. Vanessa, suppression, say it with me. Suppression. And did you not even bother to mention, Vanessa, that the display of the EVF simulation assist is supposed to display a wider output dynamic range to make highlights and dark gradations look more natural? How come you couldn't mention that? Could you not remember it and you had to read it off a script? I don't know if that's a firmware upgrade or if that's a, a hardware upgrade that's in the R3, but whatever it is, very needed, very necessary, really happy about that. Since this is definitely a sports photographer camera, as you saw, it was all over the Olympics. Check this out. You can shoot up to 1 6400th of a second. That's crazy. We're used to like 1 8000th. That, that's insanely fast. Let's see, you've got your ISO going up to 100, 2400, or doubling with the ISO expansion going to 200, 4800 on your ISO. Let's talk about how clean it is. So definitely with a lower megapixel, you kind of think in your head you're gonna get a cleaner image at a higher ISO. Here's a bunch of pictures that I took showing you the ISO range in a dark church, just going as high as I could at that time. I don't remember if I had the expansion on, but anyway, you can see how clean it is for yourself. I'm gonna stop you right there. No, I cannot give you these files to download and look for yourself. I'm sorry, I wish I could, but one, you can't do anything with the raw files anyway. Two, even I couldn't do anything with the raw files because there's no converter yet. So you're looking at straight out of camera JPEGs for the most part during this entire thing. But number three, this is a pre-production camera. These are pre-production images. I cannot give them out. Yell at me in the comments, it's not my fault. That's just how it is. But you can see it here and you can get an idea of what the noise looks like. And of course, we'll zoom it in for you so you can really see. I mean, it's clean. How, how high do you need to go? I mean, you might wanna go really high if you're shooting at 1 64,000th of a second on your shutter. You might need to compensate with some ISO, but it is 
clean, clean. I mean, tech today, man, I remember when I wouldn't go to 1600 on my ISO, so. It's clean, it's good. How come you're not talking about the lenses yet, Vanessa? Don't you know that two new lenses were released today too? There's an RF 16 millimeter F2.8 STM lens and it's compact and it's reasonably priced. It's lightweight, ultra angle RF. It's only $299. 99 and the design is comparable to that newer rf 50 millimeter 1.8 the nifty 50 well if you're talking about it on a full frame camera of course if you're looking at an aps-c camera then we have to talk about that kind of crop factor and then the 50 is not really a nifty 50 so you know i don't think you know anything about that but that lens has a minimum focusing distance of 5.1 inches but that's not there's also another lens that was released and you're not even talking about it and I don't know why because why don't you use an RF 100 to 400 f5.6 to 8 ISM USM nope IS image stabilization USM lens it's a great lens it's a nice total for no wait what's the word it's a nice telephoto lens and it's reasonably priced at $649.99 why don't you want to tell us about that gear Vanessa you just want to tell us about the six thousand dollar gear because Canon is paying you and Canon is paying you to say all these things and they're all lies and everything is crazy why don't you want to talk about the fact that this is an optical image stabilizer with up to 5.5 stops of shake correction and up to six stops of shake correction when paired with an EOS R series cameras featuring the in-body image stabilizer It's a compact, lightweight, high image quality RF with a versatile zoom range of 100 to 400. That means that sports photographers and wildlife photographers might like this lens, especially since it's only $650. It's a high speed, smooth, and quiet autofocus with Canon's Nano USM. It's a nine blade. Now, I'm not sure if you know about the nine blade circular apertures for beautiful bokeh, but it's not bokeh, it's bokeh. <laughs> oh, and this lens also has the control ring in case you want to just have more dials and things to turn and oh yeah and this is compatible with the extenders rf 1.4 and the rf 2 times extenders which some people really want to know these things so i don't know why you're talking about it vanessa vanessa some of the things that you can expect from mirrorless camera up to eight stops of stabilization we do have dual card slots now they might not be the card slots you wanted and i know some people jared poland is go you know they're going to complain they're just going to complain about the fact that it's not two of the same card slots and here's my rebuttal for the fact that i know you're going to talk about that in your video here's here's the thing i'm sweating i'm so mad at you i don't want two of the same card slots I don't want it. You want to know why? A couple of reasons. One, uh, my NAR box that I back up all my photos onto only takes SD card slots right into the NAR box without having to bring a card reader. And I really like that. So I really enjoy the fact that there's an SD card along with the CF Express card that makes, obviously the CF Express card is faster and the argument that the SD slows it down. Well, fine, shoot shoot to your CF Express if you need it to be re or writing that quickly. But for me, I really enjoy having the two card slots. Also, because quite frankly, those CF Express card slots are really expensive. Those cards, like this, this is not a cheap card. What one do I have here? I only have the 128, but if you're gonna get like the 512, that is a pretty penny. It's kind of nice having not having to double up on that price and having the SD card slot. Lastly, the other reason why I like having the two card slots is because sometimes if my shooter is going to bring along this camera and they have a card that I just don't use, now I probably have a card that they don't use. Otherwise, I would have been getting rid of all my SD cards and then I've got a shooter that's coming in and they're shooting with, I don't know, the R6 or they're shooting with the 5D4 and they need an extra card and then I don't have one from them, but you know, and now I definitely will still have all of my SD cards and I can use all my SD cards as opposed to just like buying all new cards. So anyway, I like the fact that it has two different cards in it. You know, you're so selfish and you're just so American centered. I don't know why you don't think about the rest of us all around the entire world, because that's not it about the memory cards. You are wrong. Some of us in other countries can't even get our hands on those cards. So if there was a memory card slot and there were two memory card slots and they were the same card slot, then some of us in the world wouldn't even be able to use that camera. And I don't know why you are so selfish and you just don't think of these things. Oh, you want to talk about the video? We could talk about the video capabilities. This actually shoots at the 6K. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Does it eat? 
eat. Does it eat? No, no, the camera doesn't eat. Uh, the camera does not overheat or does it overheat? That's the question. I really don't know because I'm a photographer and I didn't really shoot that much video. That is also a lie. You are shooting this entire video of me right now with an R3. This video is being shot at 4K 23.98 and it's doing great and it hasn't overheated the entire time I've been watching this video and commenting on all the things that you're doing wrong. So. <laughs> Uh, I did, however, shoot this clip of uh, 4K 120 because it does 4K 120 and if I'm shooting beautiful dancers, why wouldn't I give that a try in video mode? But I really don't know the answer. Uh, and all the times that I had it, I wasn't shooting video, I was shooting photos. I gotta go with what I know. I'm not a videographer, photographer. I don't know if it overheats. Haven't heard from Canon whether it does or not. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure Peter McKinnon will help you out with that. That is also a lie because Canon sent you this little piece of document that you can show people. And of course, I'm just gonna put it on the screen right now that shows exactly what the maximum durations of shooting until the recording stops in respective modes by the heat. And by the way, in case you didn't know this, there's also two settings as far as the auto power off temp. You can set it to standard or high. So you can get a lot of different video capabilities measured by how hot it is when you're in the working range temperature and working humidity range and that's what this chart is all about. So you can take a look and see that you get 12 minutes of record time at 4K 120 all I. Not that you know what all I is because I remember the R6 video and you didn't even talk about all I or IPB. So I don't even know why I'm telling you this right now. If you film in 4K 30 with 6K oversampling in all I, you're not limited by heat. 4K 60, 6K oversampling all I, you get 60 minutes or more. And then of course you've got the 60K, 60P raw with the auto power off standard temperature being 25 minutes, but the auto power off temperature high getting you 60 minutes or more. If you are starting from a cold start, the people want to know this. I don't know why you can't just tell them. Yeah. So 6K raw at 60 frames per second or 59.97 if you want to get specific and then you know everything underneath there so pretty cool that it goes up to 6k also great to have 4k 120 solid video camera because of those specs on there and you know of course raw that's for 4k 120 10 or 12 bit raw so you can get some pretty hefty files out of this thing some of the other things you will notice on this body well it's just sexy. Of course you would mention that it's sexy because that's just it. Just good looking people. They don't have to have a brain or any experience in the photography thing. They just have to be sexy. And that's probably why you're wearing the shirt that you're wearing right now. And that's why the thumbnail is showing the shirt that you're wearing right now. And that's why I clicked on it, but I'm mad about it anyway. You've got a really great rugged body. It definitely made this camera a little bit hard to hide when I was out there shooting real jobs before it was released. You've got your typical battery here, your LPE19. This is the same one that goes in the 1DX series. So if you're going from one camera to the next, you've got a bunch of batteries already and you don't have to worry about that. On the back here, we have both a smart controller and the multi joystick controller. So you have two of them. If you got used to touch and drag with the R5, I'm sorry, it's gone. I know. What? You're just gonna have to use the joystick. It is a little bit of a learning curve. I definitely got used to that touch and drag around my screen for focusing, but I also have really large hands. So I'm gonna assume a lot of you didn't enjoy the touch and drag as much as I did. Really large hands, Vanessa. What do you think? Those are far creep. Uh, and now it's really much easier to move your focus point around. Let's just talk about how you focus here. So when you look at the focus settings on the back of this camera and you're in the menu screen in the AF area, there is no more of the little smiley face there because the smiley face, the eye face head detection is always enabled in this camera. So you don't have to enable it. Now you can set the priority to animals, humans, or vehicles, and it's gonna do the intelligent tracking and, and all of that. Here's what we have in this camera. We have spot, one point, expand autofocus area, expand so it's going around. And then we have these three flexible zones. So one of them actually goes more horizontal, one is more square, one is more vertical. And then the last one, it's the whole area AF. All right, so that's what you can expect from the AF area and like your choices of how you want your focusing to be enabled. Now, personally, I stick on spot, I just do. Uh, and I'm moving around and looking here and you can still tap and focus, by the way. So there's that. It's just not the touch and drag. Why wouldn't you use whole area? It's a new feature. That's the smartest way to do it. Ah! 
with the joystick right there, you can move things around really quickly. And then of course the eye control autofocus, you'll find your rhythm. If you're getting this camera, you'll find your rhythm, no worries. The R3 solves one of the biggest complaints about the mirrorless series that it just doesn't have the water and dust resistance that you need for, well, a lot of sports photography. That is not my biggest complaint about the Canon mirrorless series. Let me list all of my biggest complaints, which I've already put together in a dissertation that I'm gonna take the time out of my day from my very busy schedule to continue to tell you all the things that I absolutely hate about it. So here we go, number one like the 1DX, but this one is boasting the same amount of the element protection that the 1DX3 does. In fact, it comes with this cool little thing that goes on top of the hot shoe. Uh, unfortunately, I lost that already. <laughs> of course you lost that already, Vanessa, because you're just a, a girl and you lose things, you probably put it somewhere with your nail polish. A huge ask, at least for me, with this camera is the Very Angle LCD. I don't know about you, but once you start using that LCD, you just get used to it. That is not how a normal photographer, a professional photographer holds a camera. You do not look through it. You do not hold it out like this. You look stupid. You look dumb. That is not what professional photographers do. We always hold it to our eye. It doesn't matter what new tech comes out. I'm gonna hold it to my eye. It doesn't matter how more difficult it makes my job. You put the camera to your eye. I mean, when I'm shooting up here over somebody or I'm down low, uh, it does make me a little bit of a lazy shooter, but you know, maybe not lazy. No, it's lazy. You're just, you're just lazy. Back in my day, I had to burn my hands with fixer as I put it into the fixer to develop my film and prints and do it myself. And these photographers today, you're just lazy, lazy, lazy. Maybe just like I work 12 hour wedding days and this year is just going to kill all of us wedding photographers. So just a little bit of muscle relaxation where I don't have to work that hard is really appreciated. The LCD screen measurements are 3.2 inches and a bazillion dots. Well, not really a bazillion, 4.15 million dots. It's a great LCD screen. Wi-Fi is built in 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, which is something that you'd normally have like that stick uh, on the outside for, but it's built in. So it's definitely going to help. It probably was great during the Olympics because you could just Wi-Fi your photos pretty much as you were taking them, so. Stick, I'm gonna assume that you meant the wireless file transfer WFTEA8. I don't know why you can't remember that, Vanessa, Vanessa. That's a great feature if that's your jam. Not my jam, but I'm definitely appreciating the Wi-Fi because I do same day edits the day of the wedding. Just throw these photos right to my phone, edit in Lightroom, hand them off to my clients and vendors the night of the wedding. Not all of them, just my favorites. The R3 does boast higher dynamic range, which is something I'm always looking for as a wedding photographer. It's just, you know, I'm photographing usually a white dress next to a black tux or a dark blue one. A little dynamic range goes a long way. Tell me again how hard being a wedding photographer is. It's not even, it's not even real photography. In fact, a shot that I usually do where I'm intentionally sort of blowing out the outsides with the veil, the dynamic range was so good uh, that I caught myself in the mirror on accident. Hopefully I won't make the album. Of course you blow out the skies, Vanessa. You're a natural light photographer. You don't even know how to use flash. Of course you blow out the skies and just ruin it, just ruin it. Speaking of this hot shoe, this is, I'm not sure what you call it, an intelligent, a digital hot shoe, but it has the input that's going to be used for more than just throwing a flash in here. It works with digital microphones, some of which Canon has coming out, XLR adapters, and I know they have more coming. Oh, you're not gonna talk about the STE10, Vanessa, that came out today? What's the matter? Did you not know about it? Did the little Canon baby not get a free transmitter? Well, in case you didn't know, that transmitter is really cool because it doesn't have a battery source itself. It just goes right into that R3 hot shoe and it sucks from the R3 battery to be powered up. So no more batteries, no more charging. But you didn't know that because Canon didn't give you it for free. Like you get everything for free. Oh, poor baby. So great to have that little port here that you're gonna be able to use in the future and now. All right, so let's get to it. Whew, that was all the specs. That was way too long for all the specs. And you know what, Vanessa? You didn't even get all the specs. I mean, you didn't even talk. You didn't even talk about the improved white balance function. That's so helpful for you wedding photographers that shoot in the grass all the time. And that's really good with the metering sensor to distinguish between the grass, the trees, and the lawn. And the R3 is really good about that. And the first EOS camera, EOS camera, by the way, not EOS 
camera, EOS camera to employ the automatic white balance algorithm developed on deep learning technology to perform such a distinction using image sensor data. The auto white balance capability has improved for seeds containing much greenery such as the grass, trees, and lawn in your precious wedding photography. God, read a spec sheet. I don't want to be your spec sheet. I want to tell you how I used this camera. So first of all, this camera, it was really nice having a lighter camera to pick up versus the 1DX3. Seemed to be a little bit lighter than the R5 with the battery pack because it's all built in. So that was enjoyable. Obviously it works seamlessly with all of my lenses as well as the EF lenses that I was adapting with the adapter to this mirrorless camera. It's funny, sometimes I almost forgot this was a mirrorless camera because it has that feel, that ruggedness of the 1DX series, that DSLR camera and all built in. I didn't feel like I was shooting a mirrorless camera. Throughout the day, it gave me everything that I needed. I was able to use that high dynamic range and shoot different areas using the LCD screen, moving it around. It wasn't, I'm not gonna say this is like a groundbreaking difference. It was, it was so familiar in a good way because I shot with the 1DX. So if you're a 1DX shooter, anyone in that series, this is just gonna be home to you. So if you're looking to upgrade, especially if you're a sports photographer, a vehicle photographer, whatever, this is your next upgrade. You will love this camera. It feels like home when you put your hand to the camera. And then of course you have the whole like mind body connectivity between you and the camera with this eye control autofocus. At least that's how I felt. I felt like I was just more connected to my camera. Ooh, did you want to do some yoga for photographers too? Because you felt so connected to your camera. Huh, Vanessa, maybe you should just go register yogaforphotographers.com. Oh wait, I already did. Now on my personal experience, did I use that all the time? No, it just didn't work as smoothly as I wanted to in certain situations. It's not meant to be used all the time, but with that quick toggle on and off, I used it when it was necessary and in ideal circumstances, and then turned it off when I wanted a different focusing method. You can take a look right here at the fast frames per second. I was able to test it out in mechanical as well as electronic shutter and just bursting it like crazy. It's like watching a movie. So that was smooth as could possibly be and way more than I would ever need as a wedding photographer. But for sports photography, wildlife photography, I'm sure you're really going to appreciate that 30 frames per second coming out of here. One of my favorite things about this camera was shooting during the reception. Having that low light capability in the electronic viewfinder where it wasn't doing that shutter drag thing that happens in low light with the R5, that was gold. I don't want to go back to that. So if anything, and I haven't made my final decision yet, or at least I haven't told you, if anything, this is the reception camera of choice, which makes sense actually, because it's a 24.1 megapixel camera. Now Canon is saying that the 24.1 megapixel camera with the, the sensor and how they did it all, it's gonna produce a sharper image, a better image, out of what you're used to from around a 20 megapixel camera. However, however, I did get used to 45 megapixels. Now I don't like 45 megapixels for, let's say receptions. So again, great reception camera. And why didn't you mention also that it's great for sports photographers because sports photographers very often when using the R5 according to some data that was being taken and analyzed and things that I've heard on the street which is obviously more credible than anything that you could possibly have heard from Canon directly. Why don't you talk about the fact that sports photographers actually usually downgrade the R5 image of 45 megapixels to a 20 megapixel file to about half that. So this is actually already doing that job for them and they leave need that many megapixels. <laughs> Which is half the wedding day. I know a lot of you are like, oh, I'm just gonna buy an extra camera for the reception. No, not necessarily, but I'm saying half of your wedding day is gonna at least be made easier with just that one feature, just that better in low light and the optical viewfinder simulation that this has as well as, you know, it's a 24 megapixel camera. So all those reception shots are not gonna be hogging up your hard drive. Now, I have to admit, I got used to the 45 megapixels in the R5. I did. 
uh, and I'm not sure if I want to go back. I mean, look at these side-by-side -side examples where you can zoom in uh, and see how far you zoom in and then see the image, you know, break down at one point or the other after you zoomed in way too much. And one of the features I really love about having a 45 megapixel camera with the R5 is the ability to, with my custom button, just one button, zoom in or use the one six crop. That's a very fun feature. So if you're not familiar with it, all right, so right here we go to prospect cropping aspect ratio and on a full frame camera, I'm not sure what they are on APS-C sensors, but you can go to this one six crop. So, and you can also do square and a four three aspect ratio and 69, but the one six crop essentially zooms it in times 1.6. So if I have my R5 and I'm going around during a ceremony and I have my 135 millimeter on, but I just want to zoom in a little bit more, I can just hit my 1.6 crop and it's going to digitally zoom that for me. Now it is going to cut down on the image size. You're essentially chopping off your full frame sensor to zoom it in. But at 45 megapixels to start going to a 1.6 crop, you're still giving me a, a 20 megapixel image, which is awesome i've been shooting 20 20 megapixel images for my clients for years and they're beautiful and they're great so i really enjoyed that about the r5 i can still crop in with the r3 but if i do that my 24 megapixel image is now going down to like uh 11 somewhere around there and that's getting a little bit tricky so that for me is a plus on the R5 versus the R3. You may not use that feature at all. I definitely do. So that's where that is. Why don't you tell us something useful, Vanessa, like when this camera is going to be available? I mean, I know you're just telling me now all about it and trying to get me to pre-buy it so that Canon can pay you a little bit more because you don't have any thoughts or opinions of your own and you're just a robot. You're just a robot ambassador for Canon. So why don't you just tell me that this is going to be available towards the end of November so I could just put it on my Christmas list even though I'm yelling at you about it but I just want it anyway and I'm just gonna put it on there and just hope somebody gets it to me for the holidays throughout this video I showed you a bunch of pictures that I shot on real jobs with this camera with the Canon R3 I've got a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons because well I couldn't deliver these photos to my clients because they're pre-production they're non-deliverable images so I had to shoot the same image with the R5 so there are a ton of comparison images that were popping up for you as well you know what what does it come down to as usual it's the right tool for the job uh, and for me if I have my choice and endless budget I would probably I probably use the R5 for the first half of the day and then use the R3 for the remaining I know I know uh, maybe I'll get my wish maybe <laughs> the big question that a lot of you are asking while well, this is the R3 does that beg the question there is an R1 coming and that will be the new grand flagship camera that Canon is waiting to release the truth is I don't know. I don't get a roadmap. None of us get a roadmap and I could sit here and give you all of my opinions and thoughts, but you know what? I don't care. I'm just happy to have this thing in my hands and happy to have amazing technology. And hopefully I've given you a little bit of what I think about this camera, how I used it, and you can analyze it and decide, is it a good purchase for yourself? That's it. Hit me all the questions below in case I missed some things. Oh, you missed things. Oh, you missed things. Now I'm gonna tell you exactly what they are and then I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna reply to every little thing that you wrote wrong. Here I go. Then of course, correct me where I'm wrong like I know you will. All these gear videos, I swear to God, you people. What do you mean, you people? And yes, and by you people, I mean the trolls. The rest of you are all cool. There it is. The R3, the hybrid between the 1DX3 and the R5. Hit subscribe, ring the bell. See ya. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.